Joining me now is Carrie Champion. She's the co-host of Carrie and Jamel Won't Stick to Sports and the host of the podcast Naked, Naked with Carrie Champion. But most importantly, today, she is the co-host of uh, Tokyo Tonight, the Olympic show airing right here on Peacock, which is super cool. Congratulations, Carrie. So let's yeah. start with the question I just posed. Uh, do you think the Olympics can overcome all of those controversies uh, that we've seen going into these games. Do you think it could come out and we're going to be like, that was a good Olympic Games? Uh, you know what? I think ultimately at the very end when it's all said and done and, and everyone has received their medals and they've gone home, Serlina, I think that we will feel good about the Olympics. I will say, and, I, and, and just covering sports in general, I will say most sports, especially when it comes to a championship game or a finals, there's always an asterisk because this year has been like none other. And there's been so much controversy mm. going into the Olympics, as you talked about, which is fair. Um, but at the end of the day, I do believe we will find these moments, as we always do during the games, where representing your country for specific people will mean a lot. And we globally have been through this pandemic. So for people to stand in places and receive a medal and, and fight through certain issues, um, I think that'll have a different tone because we know there are so many people who couldn't make it. But you, you know, look, you're very fair. There's a lot going on. You know, you can't dismiss it. Hmm. Can't dismiss it at all. I mean, what's the mood of the athletes? I mean, they're on the ground. They're doing their dream. They're living out their Olympic dream. But there are no fans at the Olympics. Their families can't come watch them. So it's it's a different vibe than usual. Um, have you talked to any athletes? How are they feeling about the games? You know, it's interesting. I had a chance to talk to several. Uh, one player uh, for our USA basketball team, um, and he was very honest. He said, "I got I have to tell you." Uh, it's no different because we didn't have fans for a very long time during the first part of the season. You remember that. Then they came out of the bubble, you know, the season before. They were in the NBA basketball bubble where uh, they were just playing and it was just a few people. So they are very comfortable with the fact of not having anyone there. They're used to the crowd noise and the cardboard fans. But what feels different <laughs> is the environment. A lot of it's about traveling to another country and experiencing the country. And I think that not being able to experience Tokyo mm. the, way, the way that they want to really hits different. And I think it was also less of an appeal for some other athletes. But at the end of the day, I'm speaking solely for American athletes. I think they're used to this. Yeah, I think that's such a critical point, an important context. Um, so yeah. if there's one athlete who is the star, capital letters, of these Olympic Games, it is Simone Biles. And I, I think that this morning I was like, has there ever been an Olympic Games where a black woman was going into it the biggest star? Because Michael Phelps exists. So for, for many, many <laughs> decades, um, you know, he was he was the biggest star, right? But this, this year, uh, black women are really a huge focus of these yep. games they're the biggest stars in a variety of sports but it's also at a moment where athletes are using their platforms to speak out about racial justice and social justice how do you think yeah. that's going to shake out with the focus on these black women but also all of these real world issues happening yeah. at the same time Serlina, so, that's such a wonderfully thoughtful question. I mean, and look at yourself. Congratulations on your show and all that you have been able to accomplish this past year, right? Um, everyone is focusing on the black woman. Protect black women has been an anthem. I talked to a lot of the different athletes, same as you've just mentioned, Allison Felix being one of them, namely. Uh, protect us, watch us watch what we will do. Like that has been the theme going in. And you're right, Simone Biles is unstoppable. But going into this year, I, I feel it is so important, if not necessary, to really use your platform, especially if you're an athlete in these Olympic games like Simone Biles or Allison Felix or Naomi Osaka, as they all have done, to really say something important because all eyes are on them. They are fully aware of what this past year and a half has meant and how they have this huge platform. I think what, what we're going to see 
is obviously championship performance under pressure, which is what I'm going to love and I'm rooting for them. But more importantly, I think that there will be statements made and I'm going to name a few athletes in the sense of what they want to say. So in Allison Felix's case, right, she has nine medals. She's an, a, a standout track mm -hmm. star, but she leads extremely quietly. But she's a mother. She's representing mothers. She's like, look, mm -hmm. in the world that we, we live in, it's not always good to be a mom. And I decided to have a baby before I went into my very last Olympics. And I was, I was penalized in very many ways. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to be strong. Simone Biles knows that they are changing the game for her. Simone is such an incredible athlete. It's almost like when I think of um, there are certain basketball players or certain players in the history. I'll, I'll just take Shaq as, for instance. They changed the game because Shaq was so dominant as a center. Uh, and he did so much. Yep. Simone is so dominant. They're going to change the game for her, and they're going to always push that line forward, and I think that's a compliment. Um, Naomi Osaka, she lit the cauldron. What? That's huge. And she's representing Japan, but we are fully mm -hmm. aware that she is seen as a black woman. And when people see her, they're going to really pay attention to mental health. She's going to take a break and say, I'm talking about what matters. So this Olympics um, not only is going to represent, obviously, who you are at the highest as an athlete, but it really, there are so many storylines outside of that. And I think that's why a lot of people decided to go to Tokyo, despite the drama, despite all the issues surrounding whether or not you will participate and represent your home country. Uh, this, quite frankly, for a lot of these women, is a way in which they are revolutionary. They will be revolutionary. They will stand up. They will get their medals. They will say, no mas, no more. Um, there's controversy surrounding whether or not, uh, you know, the black women can wear their soul cap. That was rejected. And where will, how will they use, you know, there's, know. Some, there's always something happening, Zerlina. And I think... What you're going to see, boldly or not so boldly, are statements. Um, there are stories outside of just winning the medal, and I think it's beautiful. It is so beautiful. Um, so in the last couple of minutes here, I want to turn quickly to some other sports news. The NFL announced that if there is a COVID outbreak among unvaccinated players, that the team will forfeit the game and take a loss, and the players also won't be paid which I think that that's the critical <laughs> sentence there in that. Uh, did you expect this kind of action from the NFL? Yeah. Because this seems like that's incentive to get vaccinated. It's interesting because years ago, the NFL said that they should lead by example, that the, the world should look at them as an example of how to change and be. And it's when they've had, they face so many different controversies, right? Um, and so uh, whether it was Cal Colin Kaepernick kneeling and should they be talking about social justice, they were late and they admitted they were late on the bus, right, with that one. They were late to that game. Um, and so now they're trying to get ahead of everything because there are so many institutions trying to determine whether or not, you know this better than me, Zerlina, whether or not they should tell their employees to get vaccinated. Well, you can't do that. But what you can do is affect that bottom line, and that's the pocketbook and the money. I don't understand how this, this issue will ever be resolved because every a lot of athletes, and I'm not going to say every athlete, but a lot of athletes I know, quite frankly, just don't believe in it. They don't want to do it. They think there's something there. There's right. more there. And you, and there are those who are saying, okay, but you'll put this in your body, but you won't get a vaccine. And there are those saying, I don't trust it. You know, historically, culturally, I don't trust it. I think the NFL had to put in place some extreme mandates which affected whether or not these players decided to, in fact, get the vaccine or... You don't have to get the vaccine, but you're gonna, we're asking you to be responsible. Because at the end of the day, this is the right. first time that I can ever remember in this country's history, Zerlina, we're all in it together. Like, we, if you don't yeah. have on a mask and you're not vaccinated, is that responsible? Is that fair to the other people around you? I don't know. You answer that question. You ask yourself that I question. Know. And so the NFL is like, listen, I, this is the only thing we can do. And what we're saying is take care of yourselves, be smart, be, be aware of your surroundings. You don't want to get vaccinated, fine. That means you're going to be aware of your surroundings and you're going to take, you're going to take the necessary precautions and you're not going to put your teammates at risk. Otherwise, you don't get paid. I don't know about you, but I need all of my paychecks. <laughs> all of the coins. I want all of my checks. I want the checks. I want the extra. I want the bonus. I want the stock options. And all. And the thing is, is like, you know, this is a group project. It's like the worst group project ever. We're all doing our homework. We're doing our part of the assignment. And then everyone else is like sitting back doing nothing. It's the worst. 